Let's take a look at some of the new audio warping capabilities in Cubase Pro 12. Many people will use audio warping to stretch audio to fix different rhythmic or timing inaccuracies in the performance. Let's take a look. So if we wanted to do audio warping on a particular file, we could double click on it and go to the audio warp tab in the sample editor and click on free warp. Now there's two icons that are really important to audio warping. One is to show and hide the grid. So we want to see the grid. So when we click here, we can see the quarter note grid that's overlaid. And the second one that's really important is using snap. Now once the free warp icon is activated here, we can now drop what we call warp markers. And warp markers are kind of the anchor that the audio is going to be moved by. So if we drop a warp marker in, we'll see an orange line. As I hover near it, it'll turn into a white line indicating that we can move that particular portion of the audio. Many people make the mistake of moving, placing just one warp marker and moving it and realizing that all the other audio is now out of time when they wanted to just adjust one particular note. If you want to just move one note a little bit earlier or later, put a warp marker before and a warp marker after, and now you could freely place that note without moving events after or before that particular audio file. Now, as we drop and populate additional warp markers, we can see that these little triangles are where the warp markers will often kind of snap to. And these little triangles indicate where our hit points are. And as audio is recorded into Cubase, it will automatically calculate hit points for you. So we can have our warp markers placed into rhythmically significant points of the audio file. Now, if we accidentally put a warp marker in the wrong place, you don't have to worry. We can just hold down the Alt or Option key and click on the very top of it and the warp marker will be erased. Now, when we want it to do warping and have it comply to the snap, we can just kind of zoom in here. And now as I move this particular warp marker, we can now have it snap based upon the grid. So our grid is set to beat and if we turn this off, it won't actually kind of fall into the little snap right there. So we can just see as we're moving across, it'll just kind of snap directly there once snap is turned on. Now, previous versions of Cubase were great at working with tuplets, but if we wanted to actually snap our warp markers to a different rhythmic value, such as triplets, it was very hard. So now we can click on use quantize and we're going to set our quantized value to quarter note triplets. And our grid has now changed to values of quarter note triplets. So as I move the events here, I can just say, okay, I want it to move this and have it snap, not only just to tuplets, but to triplets as well. If we don't want to manually populate all of our warp markers, there's a couple of other ways to do it as well. One is to just double click and we'll go to our sample editor to hit points. So if we go to my base part here, we can calculate the hit points, adjusting our threshold as well as our intensity. And from the create little, we see this little sub menu here, we can now click on warp markers. And as we go to our free warp, we can now see that our hit points have been transformed directly into warp markers for us. One of the things that people wanted to do in previous versions that they weren't able to was when working with a something like a stereo recorded guitar on two different tracks. So if we come here, we have, let's say a lead guitar recorded in stereo. And we wanted to be able to warp those together. So we could have, we would have to warp those two tracks independently. 
So now I'm going to select both these tracks and we'll come over and I'll hit Control or Command E to launch the sample editor. I'll go to my hit points and let's just populate our hit points to warp markers. And now as we go to audio warp, we can see that we have two different events selected. So we can sw switch between which is the active part. We can choose to show all clips or show only the active part. And one of the unique things that's been added is where we can edit all clips. And this is the default state. So if I wanted to just kind of zoom in here, uh, I'll make this larger on the main project window so we could see this a little easier. And now as I do warping in the project, in the sample editor, we'll notice that these changes will automatically apply directly to the part. So we could warp multiple parts together simultaneously. Now, the natural extension of this is to be able to warp from the project window directly. So we've always had kind of different warping options and now we have a free warp tool. So if I wanted to just go directly to the project window, our warp markers can be calculated right here and we could just warp right here this easily across multiple tracks. We sometimes run into different scenarios, especially with drums where phase coherency is going to be a big issue. So let's say if we wanted to listen to our drums where we're gonna have our, we see our kick, snare, hi-hats, and overheads, and we wanted to do editing on these together, what we could do is double click. And when we go to look at the selection, one of the things that's interesting is we could see both mono and stereo tracks simultaneously. We could choose one track as the focus, such as our overheads or our kick. But the problem with a lot of recordings is you need to maintain the phase coherency. So if you have a snare hit in the snare mic, it's also hitting in other mics at different times. So in previous versions of Cubase, we had, when we placed our drums, let's say into a group, we could apply group editing. So that we would allow you to edit all these as a single entity within a group. Now we have the capability of taking this a step further in that for group editing, we could click on phase coherency for warping. So when we go to our warp tool, we'll select free warp. I can just drop in warp markers as we see here. And I can freely warp with phase coherency directly on the project window. So as you can see, the new warping capabilities in Cubase 12 will really speed up your editing.